Studies show that many immigrants face financial challenges in their first year, turning the joy of relocation into a financial nightmare. Today, I'm going to be breaking down the biggest money mistakes immigrants make and how to avoid them. If you are an immigrant, expatriate, or planning to move abroad, this video could be the most important advice that you would watch. Hi, my name is Nandi. And here we discuss and talk about money to help you make better financial choices. If you find this helpful, please hit the subscribe button and like this video. Okay, think about this. What is the one financial tool that can either be your best friend or your worst enemy? I'm going to give you a minute here. It's actually credit. Immigrants often fall into two traps. One, either using too much credit or avoiding it entirely. The first group actually treats credit like it's free money. They buy expensive items that they can't afford and then they quickly start drowning in debt. While the second group avoid credit entirely. And this isn't ideal either. In places like the UK, your credit history affects everything from renting to job opportunities. It's actually proof of financial responsibility and without it, you're actually missing on a lot of better deals. It's actually not hard to use credit wisely. There are just two things, just two things that you need to do in order to use your credit card the right way. One, keep your utilization under 30% and two, pay off your balance in full at the end of the month. That's all you need to do. And if you don't have a card, you can actually apply for a credit building card and many of them come with actually low balance which I'm sure you'll be comfortable with. Okay, let's go to the second money mistake. What if I told you that a simple budget could be the difference between building wealth and living paycheck to paycheck? Many people, immigrants included, actually overlook this too. But multiple studies have shown that a budget or a plan, as I call it, is a crucial part of ensuring financial success, whatever that means to you than that simply because a budget or a spending plan is like a map that helps you to get to your destination and without it you are essentially flying blind especially in a country like the uk where your money can easily feel like it's just leaving your pocket without permission it doesn't have to be something complicated actually and you don't have to follow any restrictive percentages those percentages at best they are guides to show you what the ideal can be. The most important rule when it comes to budgeting is actually to make sure that you're spending less than you earn and then you're saving and investing the difference. If you don't remember anything, if there is one takeaway that I want you to take, this is it. Spend less than you earn and invest the difference. This is actually the foundation for any kind of success when it comes to your finance and a budget helps you to achieve this. In the description, I have a free budget spreadsheet that you can use today. I also have it in PDF format if you prefer to print out and write with paper. Check that out in the description. The third money mistake that migrants make is actually missing out on government or other incentives. So this could be from the government or your employer. I've spoken to many migrants and many of them actually fear doing anything that could jeopardize their ILR status and God forbid not after spending all those years in the UK, right? So when we see this kind of sentence on our BRP card, we don't even want to find out about any other incentive just so that we are not guilty of that. But there are incentives that we can benefit from and not taking advantage of them is actually a big, big mistake. In the UK, ISAs are one of such incentives. This ISA could mean more money in your pocket. There are different types of ISAs and they are all tax advantage accounts. That's the first thing about them. In fact, with the LISA, the government actually gives you money up to a thousand pounds in a year. Isn't that awesome? And you know, migrants are one of the most hardworking people that I know, doing all the shifts, don't, they don't take holidays, they work so hard, and we deserve our flowers. But let's not overlook incentives that we are actually entitled to. If you're not sure, ask questions. Another incentive relates to our workplace. 
from pension contribution to salary sacrifice, health insurance, you can name it. There are lots of incentives that different employers have in place. Ask yourself, do you know what you're entitled to at work? And are you taking full advantage of those incentives? L let's go to the fourth mistake. Now imagine waking up tomorrow to an unexpected crisis. Either you lose your job or a family emergency that demands you to fly back home immediately. Ask yourself, do you have a financial safety net that is strong enough to handle any of that? The fourth money mistake migrants make is actually not building a safety net. This isn't just about saving for a rainy day. As an immigrant, it's about ensuring that you have a lifeline. Because for many of us, we don't qualify for a lot of the government support, like I said earlier. And to make matters worse, we are actually far from our family and other support system. Unfortunately, this is one of the things that many migrants look. The popular advice out there is to save three to six months worth of living expenses and that's very good. But if you're in a place where you haven't saved a dime, your first milestone should actually be to save a thousand pounds and you put that in a high yield savings account. Also, building a safety net is more than just having an emergency fund. It's also about having the right insurance. The insurance like term life, income protection, these are very, very important. This is especially useful when you don't even have a large savings pot, which many immigrants fall into. They are just starting in a new country. The fifth money mistake is actually keeping up with the Joneses or Adis or Okafo in this case. Don't be like one of those people that buy things that you don't need to impress people that you don't know, especially in this day and age of social media, where people are always putting out their best foot forward. You're in a new country, so maybe you want to show that you bought all the new stuff and you keep buying and buying to impress. And I get it, you, you want to show that you're doing well and that's good, but at what expense? Is it at the expense of building wealth, real wealth? That's just wrong. What do you prefer? Having a hundred thousand pounds in your investment and savings account and driving a car worth 10k or having 10,000 pounds saved in investment and driving a hundred thousand pounds car. And I know what you're saying, Namdi, that's very simple. I'll pick option one. Who would even pick option two, right? But you're buying the latest iPhone because all your friends now have it and you don't have 50 pounds saved in, in, in an account. That's the same thing. Let's move on to mistake number six. Now with this mistake, there are different arguments for or against, but I believe that this is another mistake that a lot of migrants make and that is not planning for retirement or even when they're actually planning or doing something with regards to retirement they are getting it all wrong and i'll tell you what i mean first i've spoken to a lot of immigrants that say i am not contributing to my pensions because i will soon leave the uk and then i asked okay what are you now doing for retirement you know because you might not stay in the uk for a long time but there is something that's very certain you're going to grow old, that's all we're praying for. Nobody wants to die young, right? And then they say something that can be summed up like this, that they are pushing, taking any action to either a later date or when one thing or the other is in place, or they are investing in their home country without any proper analysis or advice. And the most important word there is proper analysis. It's not bad to invest at home, but make sure you've done your homework. Because we've heard stories of people that thought they were building a business or property back home and it's all smoke. So it's something that you need to be careful of if you're in that shoes. And if you have not taken any action today with regards to retirement, you can actually change that if you're in paid employment by actually subscribing to your pension instead of opting out, opt back in. Every little counts. And in fact, you're getting free money from your employer and tax rebates from the government, which links us back to our previous point, not leaving money on the table, taking advantage of every single incentive in this country. Okay, the final mistake that I see many immigrants make. For many immigrants, when we move abroad, it's not just our life that changes. 
your role within your family actually changes and community too. Suddenly, you might become the financial pillar for relatives back home. And the truth is, that's a blessing. It's a blessing to be in this position to give, to help. And it's also rooted in our culture. There is no escaping it. But you must do this properly. You can't help everyone back home and not take care of your own present self and your future self. What do I mean? Imagine this example. You are sending money back home, but you don't have or you're not actively building an emergency fund or you're not even saving for retirement at all. That is not right. But how do you handle it if you're in this scenario? First, you need to decide on a fixed amount or a percentage of your income that you would allocate for family to support them each month. If your budget allows, let's say for example, 200 pounds, 300 pounds, or whatever amount that you can afford, but that is what you're going to allocate. And no matter how many requests, once that money is finished, you wait until the next month. That is how to sustainably handle black tax without jeopardizing yourself. It's crucial to also have honest conversations with family members about your financial limitations. It might be a difficult conversation, but it's actually necessary that you do that. And there you have it. These are the tips. If these tips helped you, please share them with someone. People need to hear about it. And I'd love to hear from you in the, in the comment section. What financial lessons have you learned along the way on your journey here in a new country? Also like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.